What's up everybody, this is Teacher Ivan from Next Gen Academy. Our goal in this channel is to help you achieve your highest potential and to help you understand subjects in the easiest and the most efficient way. If you'd like to get more tips and tricks on how to achieve A star in your IGCSE, don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe to this channel. Lastly, if you need any help in your studies, you can always head on to our website, link in the below or our Instagram, drop us a DM and we'll be able to help you. Enjoy this video and I wish you all the best. All right, all right. Okay, welcome back, my next gen family. We are going to go through this paper, May, June 2024, paper 2-2. Two, two. Okay, this is a one and a half hour paper. We get right into it. Okay, question one. The temperature at midnight is negative 4 degrees Celsius. The temperature at noon is 25 degrees Celsius. Work out the difference between the, these two temperatures. Okay, so difference means you need to minus both the values with each other. So you can just take 25 minus negative 4. Minus and minus will become plus, which will get 29 degrees Celsius. Okay, number two. A gardener charges $6.55 for each hour he works plus a fixed charge of $15.50. Calculate the total amount he charges when he works for four hours. So you need to take your fixed charge plus every hour he works, you will charge $6.55. 55 cents. So he worked for four hours, so we can take four multiplied by 6.55. The total will be equals to 41.70. Question two. Number three. A delivery driver records the number of pizza she delivers each month for one year. Complete the stem and leaf diagram. Okay, so when we do stem and leaf diagram, what I normally prefer to do is I will put it in the respective groups first but I'll put an unordered stem and leaf diagram first, meaning I arrange all the values into the respective group before I rearrange it in order. Okay, so for example, 48, I'll put here 8. 36, put here 6. So I'm going down like this, all right? Then here, 44, 41, 39, 54, 28, 57, 57, 49, 22, and 52. Okay, so we call this unordered stem and leaf diagram. Okay, during exam, please don't write this in, in pen. You write this uh, either in pencil or write it on your rough paper. Then you need to order it, meaning you need to put in ascending order from small to big. So 2, 8, 6, 9, 1, 4, 8, 9, 2, 4, Seven, seven. Another thing for stem and leaf, make sure you align the values vertically like that also. Okay, your, your column. Okay, next one. They say find median. There are two ways you can do it. It's either you do the calculation way or you can just count. One, two, uh, sorry. One, one, two, two, three, three, four. Okay, like that. One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five then you'll get these two values as your middle value. Then you take the average of it. Okay. Another way that you can do it is you find what is the position of the median first. So total, we got how many values? Okay, we have 12 values in total. So you're going to take n plus 1 divided by 2, which is 12 plus 1 divided by 2 equals to 6.5. 6.5 means we want to take the average of the 6 and seven value okay you see is it the same thing one two three four five six and seven okay important for y'all to remember this formula for later on more advanced type of uh, median calculation of median okay then you're going to take median which is equals to both the value 44 plus 48 divided by two and you get 46 here yeah up to you whichever that you prefer okay number four Jonah has $750. He spends one over four of his money on travel and some of his money on food. He now has $437.50. Work out the fraction of the $750 he spends on food. Okay, let's break it down. Let's calculate travel first. Okay, travel, he spent one over four of it. So he spent a total of $750 times one over four, which is equal to 187.50. Then, food. Okay, how much did he spend on food? He now has 437.50. So we take the total 
minus travel minus what he left over. That's the amount he spent on food. You get 125 over here. And then the last one, the fraction of it, we'll take food over total. 125 over 750, we can simplify it to 1 over 6. Number 5, the table shows part of a tram timetable. All the trams take the same number of minutes to complete the journey from New Point to West Hill. Complete the table. Okay, we need to find what is the total timing first. You either take this or take this up to you. So I'll take this number minus this time. 11.17 minus 10.30. Okay, to minus it, we can straight away write it in this way. So 11.17 minus 10.30. Either you use calculator or you do it manually. You borrow one hour, you add 60. 77 minus 30, you will get 47. So there's a total of 47 minutes journey. So here, 12.18. We add 47. Here we become 5, 6, 1, 2, 6, 5, more than 60. You are gonna minus 60, then add one hour. Okay, or you can write uh 13, okay, 1305, since they are using in 24 hours system. Oops, 1305 should be here. Okay, next one. Correct this value to two significant figures. Okay? Significant figure will be the first non-zero digit. So this one, first, second significant figure. Look at the next value. See, do you need to round up? Two is below five, so you don't need to round up. The answer will just be 0 0.046. Number seven. On the Venn diagram, shape the region A, Union B. Okay, U, this one means union. Union means everything of A, everything of B. So you just need to shape this entire thing. All of A, all of B. Number eight, Kai invests $5,000 in an account paying a simple interest R% per year. At the end of eight years, the value of his investment is 5600 Find the value of R. Okay, so let's see what do we have here first. Um, okay, we first understand the formula of Simple interest is PRT over 100. Okay, another thing, there's a difference between compound interest and simple interest. Compound interest cal calculates the total. Simple interest only calculates the interest. What they gave us here is the total, so we need to find what is the interest first. So interest is 5,700 minus 5,000, which is equal to 700. Then what they gave us, this is your P, your principal. You want to find what's your R. And we have T over here. We fill in the blanks. 700 equals to 5,000 times R times 8 over 100. Okay, rearrange it. R is equals to 700 times 100 divided 5,000 times 8 at the bottom, which we will get 1.75. Okay, the next one, transformation. Describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle A onto triangle B. A to B, this is an enlargement. So enlargement, you got another clue you can get. Uh, is There's three marks here, so you need three points. Okay, Enlargement, you need to find scale factor and also the center. To find the center, you first have to connect two similar points with each other and then you see where they meet. Okay, over here, what is this point? This is negative 1, 1. Okay, to describe this, this is an enlargement. Then you need to write what is a scale factor. Okay, scale factor, you can just take two similar sides. For example, if I take this and this, you take the image over the object. Okay, that's the K value. So K is scale factor, the length of the image over the length of the object. In this case, it's 2 over 1, which is equal to 2. And then you can write down what is the center. That's how we get 3 marks. Okay, next one. On the grid, draw the image of triangle A after a translation by the vector negative 4, 3. Negative 4 means 4 left, 3 up. Okay, every single point will be 4 left, then 3 up. 
So one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Okay, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. You should get the same exact shape. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. Okay, drop. And another thing is, uh, just in case uh, the question, they may ask you to draw oops, a few different uh, shapes. You label down, okay? Label down the, which question are you doing? Okay, next one, write. 174000 in standard form. Okay, what are the rules of standard form? A times 10 to the power of n. The value of A needs to be from 1 to below 10. Okay, it can be 1. In short, it is before the decimal place, there is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, one non zero digit. Then, in terms of moving the decimal place, okay, this is to find the power of n. If your decimal place moves, left, your power will add. If your decimal place moves right, your power will minus. So you go one, two, three, four, five. Okay, it moves to the left five times, so your power add by five. So our final answer will be 1.74 times 10 to the power of five. Next. Number 11, a company surveys 40 of its employees. In the survey, three employees say they work to work. The company has a total of 1240 employees. Find the expected number of employees in the company who work to work. They work to work. What is the probability first? Three out of 40. Then the expected number, you take the total multiply by this probability. You will get 93. Okay, the next one, calculate the value of x. Okay, this is a right angle triangle. So whenever we do right angle triangle type of question, we think about few formulas. We either do Pythagoras theorem, Sokatoa, or if they ask us to find area, we just use half times base times height. This one, got length and angle. Okay, length and angle, you're going to use Sokatoa. Sokatoa, this is your adjacent. This is your hypotenuse. So cos x is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 8.5 over 14. x is equal to, type this in calculator, inverse cos 8.5 over 14, which will give you 52.6. Okay, you don't have to write the degree again because here already given to you the degree. Question 13, without using a calculator, work out 2 and 1 over 4 divided by 1 and 7 over 8. You must show all your working and make sure it's in mixed number, simplest form. Okay, before we do this, take your calculator, type out this into your calculator first. Type in the calculator, get the answer, write it down somewhere at the side, okay, just in case you all calculate wrongly. Okay, anyway, how to do it manually? Okay, the first step, actually, you still can use calculator uh, to, to calculate the, to convert it to improper fraction. Okay, to calculate into improper fraction, you're going to multiply, then plus like this. 2 times 4 plus 1 over 4 divided 1 times 8 plus 7 divided 8. 9 over 4 divided 15 over 8. When we divide a fraction, we have to use KFC's brother, okay, which is keep, change, flip. KCF. We're going to keep this first value. We're going to change the symbol for this. And then we're going to flip the value at the back. Okay, from here, we can simplify it. 9 and 15 both can be divided by 3. So this will become 3. This will become 5. This and this can be divided by 4. So here will be 1 and 2. We end up with 6 over 5. And you convert it to mixed number. 1 and 2. 1 over 5. Next. Question 14. A is the point 0, 2. B is the point 8, 6. Find the equation of line AB. Give your answer in the form y equals mx plus c. Okay, so y equals mx plus c. There are two things that we need to find. Number one, what is the m value, which is your gradient? Then what is your c value? Okay, c value, which is the y-intercept, 
already here. So this, we don't need to go calculate already. C is equals to 2. Y intercept. We find out what are the two, uh, what was the gradient. So formula of gradient is Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. 6 minus 2 over 8 minus 0, which is equal to 4 over 8. And simplify to 1 over 2. We fit into the formula, we'll get 1 over 2x plus 2. Okay, next one, 15. Three towns, A, B, and C, equidistance. Equidistance means all same distance, equal distance. The bearing of C from A is 104 degrees. From A, so that means this part here, 100 and 4 degrees. Calculate the bearing of B from C. Where is B from C? This part here. Then we connect to here. Okay. So what do we know? The first thing they give us, they say this is equidistance. Since it's equidistance here will be 60 degrees, 60 degrees, 60 degrees. Okay. For bearing, okay, this is a bearing type of question. We can always use this special angle, which is this side. This is called co-interior angle. Two parallel sides, this angle and this angle add up will be equal to 180. Okay, so we're going to calculate this one first. This part here will be 180 minus 104, which will get 76 degrees. Okay, then to find this angle, this is the bearing that we want. We're going to take 360 minus this minus this. So 360 minus 76 minus 60, which will get 224 degrees. Okay, next one. Question 16. The speed time graph shows info about a car journey. Find the deceleration of the car between 240 and 320 seconds. This part here. All right, we need to define first what can we find from a speed time graph. There are two kinematics graph that, or we call it motion graph, that you all need to know. Okay, so based on this question, this is speed time. I want you all to always write down the definition first before you all do this question. Okay, speed time, you can find the gradient represents the acceleration. Okay, acceleration or deceleration. You're going down deceleration. Then the area will be equals to distance. Both of the graph may look exactly the same, but they define different things. Okay, the other graph that you need to know is called distance time graph. You can write this down. Distance time graph. Distance time graph, we can find the gradient represents the speed. Okay, so two different definitions. To find this, we take the coordinates of these two points first. Okay, this will be 240 and 16. And over here is 320 and zero. Okay, they say they want us to find the deceleration. Okay, normally what, what do we do for uh gradient? Okay, the acceleration represents the gradient. Right? So we can take y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, so we can take 0 minus 16 over 320 minus 240. The a value is equal to negative 0 0.2. So this is the acceleration. Okay, the acceleration is negative. The language here, they say they want deceleration. So we just write as 0 0.2 meter per second squared. Okay, then the next thing, they say calculate the total distance the car travels during the 320 seconds. Okay, there are two ways you can do it. Either you straight away find the area of trapezium or you break it down into area B, A, B, and area C. You add all three up together. And then you find, you can find the area. Okay, I... I'm going to do the shortcut way, which is we use trapezium. Okay, here is 320. Okay, bottom is 320. Top part here, 240 minus 30, which is equals to 210. And then the height, height will be equals to 60. The okay, formula for trapezium is 1 over 2 A plus B multiplied by height. 320 plus 210. Multiply by 16. If you calculate this, 320 plus 210 times 16 divided by 2, 
you get 4240 meters. Okay, question 17 is a Venn diagram. W, students who walk to school. G, students who wear glasses. There are 20 students in a class. Eight walk to school, eight wear, wear glasses and walk to school. Two do not wear glasses and do not walk to school. Okay, complete the Venn diagram. Where do we start? Okay, normally what I will do, we start from the middle. Okay, what is common? They say three wear glasses and walk to school. Okay, for this statement, we put inside here. Because this one is the only one that is, we sure we can write down the value. Okay, any other things that we can, what's the second one that we can write? Two do not wear glasses and do not walk to school. Okay, do not walk glass, do not wear glasses and do not walk to school. So this one will be the one that's outside. Okay, that's right here. Two. This one is confirmed already. So we don't need to do any calculation. As for this, eight walk to school. Eight walk to school means this entire thing is walk to school. So I need to minus off this value of three here. Okay, which is eight minus three, which is equals to five. Okay, and the final one, they say total, you have 20 students, right? So this part here, you take 20 minus 5 minus 3 minus 2, which is equal to 10. Okay, during your final presentation, don't write this in your final answer. Next one, question 18. Okay, you got fx drawn. Draw the tangent to the graph at the point x equals to 3. Okay, tangent is just a line that touches at one point and one point only. So x equals to 3 is here. You take your ruler, you draw out a line. Okay, your line and my line might look a little bit different, like it will intersect at different points, but it doesn't matter. Okay, but it needs to, okay, it needs to, to be a tangent. Now. Okay, so just draw a tangent. This is for question A. Then they say, use your tangent to find and estimate for the gradient of the curve at the point x equals to 3. To find gradient, you need two points. There's quite a number of gradient questions, right? So what I'll do, take any two points, take points that are easy for you to read. Okay, your point and my point might be slightly different. Huh? So the, the final value of gradient might be a little bit different. They will accept a range of values. Huh? Okay, so based on my here, this point is 1.90. Then this point is 4. I'm going to use these two points. Gradient is equals to 10 minus 0 over 4 minus 1.9. Okay, which I'll get 4.7. Oops, did 4.76. Okay, looks like it's too small. Let me see again. 4 and 10. 1. 9 and 0. Mm, okay, let me calculate again. Huh? Okay, according to the mark scheme, it can only be acceptable from 4.8 to 5.8. Okay, my value over here, 4 minus 1.9. Okay, my value over here is slightly lower, 4.76. Okay, which round up actually is 4.8. Uh. Okay, over here also they never say okay, they never say what is the what is the number of decimal place. Okay, so I will assume that this is also acceptable. Okay, number 19. Y is directly proportional to x minus 1 squared. When x equals to 4, y equals to 3. Find y when x equals to 7. Okay, you see the keyword here, directly proportional. Whenever you see this directly proportional type of question, you need to know that your first step is you need to find your k value. So we write down the statement first. Y is directly proportional. We draw this fish symbol to x minus 1 squared. We change it to an equation. So y equals to k bracket x minus 1 squared. Then you substitute in the two values that they give you. x equals to 4, y equals to 3. So second step here, 4 equals to, oops, 3 is equals to k, 4 minus 1 squared, k, 3 squared, k, uh, here will be 
3 equals to 9k. Your k value is equals to 1 over 3. So we will get y equals to 1 over 3 x minus 1 squared. Okay, so this is the equation that represents the relationship between x and y. Remember, always find k first. Then the next step is you substitute in the value that they want you to, to find. x equals to 7. Substitute y equals to 1 over 3, 7 minus 1 squared. Okay, you'll get equals to 12. And then question B, M is inversely proportional to the square root of P. Explain what happens to the value of M when the value of P is multiplied by 9. Okay, this is how you do this question. We write down the relationship first. M is inversely proportional. Inversely means you put 1 over square root P. Okay, we want to understand what happens to the value of P m if this is multiplied by 9. Okay, when they say multiply by 9, let's just assume that p is originally equal to 1 uh, because then it's easy for us to calculate it because now they're not giving us any value. We just assume that it is equal to 1. So if it's 9 times, means your p is 9. So over here, p becomes 9 means your m is now one third the value or we can say that it is divided by 3. Okay, so m is divided by 3. This will be your answer. Question 20. Two math parcels are mathematically similar. Okay, we see this question, similarity. We define as a similarity type of question. The larger parcel has a volume of 80 cm cube and height 5.2 cm. The smaller parcel has volume 33.75 cm cube. Calculate the height of the smaller parcel. Okay, whenever we see similarity type of question, we write down this formula. Because they will test you between length, area, and volume. L1 over L2 equals to square root A1 over A2 over cube root V1 over V2. What we are finding over here, we are comparing all the k values, which is a constant. Okay, now they are asking us to find between length and volume. Okay, height is length. Length and volume, and they want us to find the height of the smaller parcel. So this is what I will do. Okay, we, we just, just roughly draw our first. I don't know what is the length or the, the height of the smaller one. Okay, let's call this LS. Length small, I don't know. Volume small, I know is 33.75 cm cube. Okay, the big one, or the, the larger one, okay, length large is 5.2. Volume of the large one is equals to 80 cm cube. Okay, we're going to take this two of it to do a similarity. So normally what I, the, we will put the unknown at the top left of the equation. So I will do it like this. Small over large. Your length small over volume small is equals to length large over volume large. Okay, which you will get length small over 30... Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. See, I'm so confused. Right? Length large should be at the bottom. Length large equals to volume small over volume large. Then you have to cube root this. Okay, length small, length large is, or your height of the large one is 5.2. Cube root, volume small, 33.75 over 80. Okay, go and calculate this whole thing and then rearrange. Put the 5.2 to the right-hand side. Okay, on the right-hand side here, you will get 3 over 4. Okay, go cube root this value here. Then you multiply by 5.2, which you will get 3.9. Okay, based on my opinion, I feel that this way is the easiest way to, to solve for similar, similarity type of question. Okay, question 21. You want to solve this simultaneous equation. Okay, it's a five mark question. You look at the bottom. Okay, you must show all your working. Okay, this type of question, we call it a linear and non-linear uh, type of simultaneous equation. 
normally it will be a bit longer. And based on your maths, you will normally need to use a uh, quadratic. Okay, you need to solve a quadratic equation. Okay, let's call this equation one and equation two. We are going to substitute equation two into equation one. So here we replace all the y with x squared minus 18. Okay, plus 3x equals to 13. Open up the bracket. 4x squared minus 72 plus 3x. Move the 13 to the left hand side so that we can construct a quadratic equation. 4x squared plus 3x minus 85 equals to 0. We factorize this. If you know, just use your calculator for now. Okay, but you need to show this working out. 4x minus 17, x plus 5 equals to 0. We get 4x minus 17 equals to 0, x plus 5 equals to 0. x equals to 17 over 4, x equals to negative 5. Then we need to find what's the y value. I'm going to sub both the x value into equation 2. Because 2 already is y equals x squared. So 17 over 4 square minus 18. This one will be minus 5 square minus 18. So y equals to 1 over 16. This one is y is equals to 7. Okay, once again, if you don't know how to use, uh, if you don't know how to factorize it, okay, just for your other final batch of students, uh, which is the on 20241 if you don't know how to factorize your quadratic, just use calculator, but Make sure you know how to show the presentation here. You need to show the bracket and bracket. Okay, when you put the final answer, be careful also in the position. This and this is one, one set of answers. So 17 over 4, 1 over 16, and here minus 5 and 7. This is question 21. Okay, let's go to question 22. Okay, for your math, you all need to know uh, quite a number of graphs. Uh. So let's see here. They say for each sketch, put a ring around the correct type of function. Okay, I'm going to show you all what you need to know. I'll just roughly sketch at the bottom here. Okay, number one, linear. Linear means line. Going up, going down, sometimes horizontal, sometimes vertical. Okay, cubic, you've got two graphs. Set, happy, or happy set. Okay, so Cubic means x cubed. Quadratic, x squared. Okay, this one x cubed. This one, when you got x squared, either happy face or sad face. Okay, the next one, reciprocal. Reciprocal means the equation is 1 over x. The meaning of reciprocal means inverse. You got two types of graph that can possibly come out for your reciprocal. Actually, you got more than two types, but main thing is two types. You do like this, like this, okay, like the one at the bottom, or like this, like this. This is 1 over x, this is negative 1 over x. Okay, and the final one, exponential. Okay, exponential looks like this. Okay, going up. So this, you see, is a set, then happy face. Uh, sorry, this is called a cubic equation. Okay, number two, this one. Reciprocal. Okay, on top of all this graph, you all need to know your trigo graph also. Okay, your trigo graph is you need to know your sine, cos, and tangent. Sine, cos, and tangent, they are the main points are in the intervals of 90 degrees. That means 0, 90. Okay, this is what I'll do. Uh, plot out 90 degrees, 180, 270, 360. Or y equals to sine x. If you don't know, you just type sine 0, sine 90, sine 180, sine 270, sine 360. But by right, you should know how the, the graph looks like already. So this one will start at 0 and 90 degrees. It will be 1, 0, negative 1, and 0. Okay, it will be like this. Going up, going down, and go up again. Okay, it's like a S-shaped roller coaster. Okay, then for this solving, Solve sine x plus 0 0.4 equals to 0. Okay, for this, I'm going to use the ASTC method. If you don't know, go through my videos to understand uh, this, this method here. So the first step is we need to make the trigo on the left-hand side by itself to make it as a subject. And whatever that's, that's the value and all, you move it to the right-hand side. So sine x equals to negative 0 0.4. 
Okay, the, after this step, so this is the first step. After this step, we need to find the base angle. Base angle, we call it alpha. I'm going to solve this, but you're not going to put the negative value inside. So you're just going to put like that, 23.6 degrees. Okay. Next step. Okay, this is step one, step two. Step three is you use the ASTC graph. ASTC graph means you're going to select which quadrant is the answer at. So here I will have my sign value is negative. So according to ASTC, this will be at quadrant three and quadrant four. And to calculate for quadrant three, it will be 180 plus alpha. Then here is 360 minus alpha. Okay, and the last step, I'm going to calculate what is the x value, okay, which is 180 plus alpha and 360 minus alpha. The alpha you we calculated in the second step, 23.6. Okay, which is equal to 203.6 degrees and 336.4 degrees. Okay, let's go to the last two questions. Question 23. The Venn diagram shows info about the number of students in the class. Some study English, E, F, French, Spanish, S, and some do not study any of these languages. Okay, find number E union F bracket prime union S. Be careful on this. Uh, this one, you have to read this statement here. They say that this shows information about the number of students in the class. That means these are number of students. Okay, these are not elements. Uh. Elements and number is two different things. Okay, so this is not like one value. One value. This is like the there are eight values inside here. Just that they write here as eight already because of this word here, number. So to find this uh region here, E union F prime. That means not E union F. Where's that section? Okay, we start with this this statement here. Outside of E and F. Okay, you see this part here. This is the first statement. All right, then union S. Okay, union S means this whole part here. So whatever I highlighted, I want you to add up all the number because union is everything. So two, one, three, four, and five. Two plus one plus three plus four plus five, which is equal to? 15. Okay, and then question B. One student is picked at random from those who study Spanish. So when they say this statement, this is called a conditional probability. You are only going to take base from this group. All the others, you don't care already. Okay, so where exactly are the ones who study Spanish only? This part here. Okay, so you're just going to look at Spanish. Okay, English or Spanish? <laughs> okay, Spanish only. Find the probability that these students study exactly two languages. So that means based on this group, how many of them study two languages? Okay, here and here, right? Two and three. So we find those in Spanish first. Spanish got how many? Okay, total in Spanish. Okay, just write Spanish. Uh. S, uh. S, we have 2 plus 1 plus 3 plus 4, which is equal to 10. Two languages. Okay, two language. We've got 2 and 3, which is equal to 5. Therefore, the probability is equals to 5 over 10, which is equal to 1 over 2. All right. Okay, and the final one. Let's go to the final one. Question 24. Okay, this is a vector question. Okay, I think the last one can be a bit tricky. 
O is the origin and OPQR is a parallelogram. M is the midpoint of PQ, so this midpoint, and N divides QR. N divides QR in the ratio 2 to 1. Okay, whenever they give you some sort of ratio, I want you to write like that. You write the value, then you circle it because you want to differentiate between uh, ratio and the vector itself. Okay, what else they give us? They say here is A, here is B. So since this is a parallelogram, here is going up is A, here also going up is A. Going right B, this one also B. Okay, M, N. How can we get from M to N? So we can go MQ plus QN. Okay, MQ plus QN. What's MQ? Over here, we have, okay, it's the middle. So this one will be 1 over 2B. Going down, QN, the entire thing is A. So we split it into three parts. This will be minus 2 over 3A. So MN will be equals to MQ plus QN, which is equal to 1 over 2B minus 2 over 3A. Okay, the final one. The line MN and OR are extended to meet S over here. Find the position vector of S. Position vector means O, S. Okay, we want to find what is O, S. Whenever they say position vector of an alphabet, means your original position is O. Okay, give your answer in terms of A and B in its simplest form. Okay, how can we get O, S here? We already got O, R, but I don't have R, S here. Okay, this vector type of question, now you look at the past year question, you hear my discussion. If you see there's a point that is like, outside of, normally we'll use the concept of similarity. Okay, how to find similarity? You need to find, you need to use these two triangles here. So the first one, you're going to compare M and Q, and then you're going to compare this one, R and S. Okay, R and S, this part. Okay, which and which side is similar? This and this side is similar, then this and this side will be similar. Got it? Okay, and they also gave us the ratio. So you see here, 2 and 1. So I'm going to compare MQ and RS. Okay, MQ and RS, because these two are the similar sides. Got it, huh? Okay, so the big one to the small one, the ratio is 2 to 1. So if I want to find RS, so using the concept of similarity, RS over MQ, okay, these two are the similar sides, is 1 to 2, or 1 over 2. MQ, we already found just now, which is 1 over 2B. So RS, uh, we can rearrange this, uh, RS equals to 1 over 2 MQ, MQ is 1 over 2B. Therefore, RS is 1 over 4B. Okay, so here is 1 over 4B. Final one, OS is equals to OR plus RS, which is B plus 1 over 4B. 5 over 4B. This is your final answer. Okay, good. This paper. All right. Congratulations, everyone. You have made it through this paper. Okay, I will send you all the answers. Okay, so if any of you need help, any of you here watching, okay, you can always head on to my website and join one of our classes. See you all in the next class.